Hi everybody, this is Anne. With all the experimenting that Jim and I do in our videos, you knew one day the treasure hunting for things to use for pottery decorating would lead us to the underwear drawer. <laughs> in this video, we're experimenting with the textured patterns of fishnet stockings. These can be found anywhere you purchase costumes or anywhere online. Just make sure they're made with somewhat waterproof material. I'm going to experiment on various bone dry round forms to see if this technique will work when presented with challenging scenarios. You will also need a simple atomizer for this project. Mine has a little rust in the bottom, but it still works well. I thought I would prep all the pieces first. For this simple cylinder, I stretched the toe of the stocking against the wall of the piece to measure how much I needed, then I cut it with sharp scissors. Now I can easily open it up and stretch it over the top. For this particular design, I wanted straight vertical lines, so I just stretched each section until it was the way I wanted it. Now this one's pretty straightforward, although it has ridges at the bottom. I hope that won't be a problem. This next cylinder has squared off sides. I thought it'd be fun to use the same stocking pattern. Since I already cut off the toe, I just had to knot the bottom. Then I pulled it over the piece and this time I twisted the pattern so it was swirled around which gave it movement. Since the bottom of the piece is much smaller than the sides, I used a rubber band around the foot so the material would be flush to the surface. This pattern's very intricate. I thought I'd see if I could stretch it over a bowl. I cut the toe off and stretched it out. I turned the bowl over and worked it over the foot first and then all the way to the rim. I made sure the pattern was straight. In hindsight, I should have cut off more material for this one. I really had to stretch it out. Again, I used a rubber band around the bottom. Now this cylinder has facets in it that will be a challenge. I thought this pattern would work with it. Notice that I couldn't make the material fit tight to the inside of the grooves. I thought maybe twisting the stocking around might help a little. As you can see, it does help a little, but there are still some gaps. It'll be interesting to see how this impacts the pattern. This next piece has four flat sides. I thought I would tape off the two alternating sides to mask them, then paint a different pattern on those blank sides later. This stocking pattern will be fun. And looking at that tape under there, I could have underglazed those sides and sprayed over the stocking for a cool look too. Here's a tripod mug with a handle. That handle will be challenging as well as the bottom legs. I knot at the bottom of one of the stockings and then cut it. I wrap the piece with the stocking, trying to get the pattern straight. I sewed a couple of stitches under the handle to make the material fit tight to the clay. I don't know if that'll work, but I crossed my fingers. Now 
Next, I needed to prepare the black underglaze. I ran it through a strainer before putting it in the atomizer so there were no chunks that might get stuck in the tube and stop it up. The underglaze was a bit thick, so I added just a little water to it. For safety reasons, I set up a workstation outside to do the spraying. The atomizer is very easy to use. I tested it out against the paper to make sure it was emitting underglaze that wasn't too runny. I held it about 8 inches away from the piece, then started applying it in strips. The black is such a strong color, I don't need a lot. When the piece turned totally black, I knew it was covered. Here's the twisted pattern piece. If the piece looked a little drippy, I just used the hair dryer on it to dry it out a little. I had two more experiments I wanted to try. I had a bowl that I already had done a pattern in blue. I thought I'd overlay another pattern over it and spray it with the black. This piece I'd sprayed a black pattern over, so I thought in the spirit of Halloween I would overlay it with orange. Now for the reveal. Oh my gosh, I love that one. And those ridges at the bottom didn't seem to affect the pattern at all. Here's the one where I spiraled the fishnet. How cool is that? Now here's the bowl with the intricate design. It's not quite as clean as I wanted. The neat thing about working on greenware, though, is that you can still sponge off the underglaze and go again. This time with a bigger piece of stocking, though, so I don't have to stretch it as tight. If you stay till the end of the video, you'll get to see that. Now here's the faceted piece. You can see it's darker where the material wasn't tight to the clay, but it actually works to highlight the grooves. Now for the four-sided piece. The masking worked well, and at the end of the video, you'll see how I painted on those blank sides. Now here's the tripod mug. I just cut the stitched part out. That is so cool. I had my doubts about that one, but I really like it. I can work with it and maybe hand paint a couple of the areas along the bottom. Remember the extra pieces that I wanted to experiment with? Well, here's the ball I started with, with just the blue pattern. Then I sprayed over it with the black pattern. You can see the blue underglaze under there, although I couldn't make out the original pattern underneath, but it didn't really matter. It's still pretty cool. Now here's the one where I sprayed the orange over the black design. There's the original black pattern. 
Wow, that is interesting. The black is so powerful that you can make out the original pattern more than the overlay. Now all I needed to do was sponge off any excess underglaze to clean them up. I bisque these, then glaze them with a clear glaze over the design and a white liner on the inside. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It really helps us out if you subscribe and like our videos as well. See you next time in the studio!